Hello everyone. In this session, we will discuss the another problem regarding the root locus. First, the problem is root locus of open loop transfer function is k by s into s square plus 2s plus 2 into s plus 4. So first, if you observe this, this is the this is fourth order system because s power 1 s square yes this is the fourth order system first okay so first number of poles p equals to 4 is available those poles are number of poles are 4 and the first pole is at 0 and the second pole we already did, did in the previous problem it is s square plus 2s plus 2 consisting of the complex conjugate poles those poles are minus 1 plus j1 is the one pole and minus 1 minus j1 is the another pole. The next pole is the minus 4. And is there any zeros? No. Zeros will be the 0. So that means there is no zeros means we have 4 asymptotes 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have the 4 infinite zeros. We have the 4 infinite zeros wherever we have four infinite zeros first we should find out the angle of asymptotes next we will go for the angle of asymptotes we have four angles the angle of asymptotes equal theta a equal angle of asymptote equal 2q plus 1 into 180 by poles minus 0 this is the formula and we have poles is q equal to 0 1 2 3 okay for 0 for first fold 1 is second fold third fold and fourth fold just you separate substitute first angle of asymptote 1 theta a1 just substitute 2 into 0 plus 1 by and 4 minus 0 into 180 by doing this we will get uh, 1 by 4 into 180 we will have the 45 is the one and second angle of asymptote theta a to equal to 2 into 1 plus 1 into 180 by 4 minus 0 by doing this we will get the 135 and same as theta a3 you will get 225 and next also you will get theta a4 equal to 4, 315 so angle of asymptote 1 equal 45 angle of asymptote 2 equal 135 asymptote 3 equal 225 and last angle is 315 these are the different different asymptote angle these are the different different asymptote angles and in order to get this we should go for and we should find out the centroid so before finding the centroid just locate our poles so for that purpose we will take s plane just draw the s plane here i am drawing the s plane this is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis okay this is the real axis and then this is the imaginary axis right here what are the poles there first pole is the zero so we should take this is the pole one that is the s equal to zero and what is the second pole minus one plus j1 so assume take it this is the Take minus 1 and minus 2 and minus 3 and minus 4. So this is the minus 1 plus j1. Plus j1 means take it here somewhere. This is plus j1 and assume this is the minus j1. So combination of these two, combination of these two, we have minus 1 plus j1. So we have minus 1 plus j1. So this pole is so this is plus j1 
pole and this is the minus j1 pole so minus j1 point so here we have the one pole the pole is minus 1 plus j1 is another pole this is another pole minus 1 minus j1 is the another pole what is the next pole here the next pole is minus 4 this minus 2 this minus so this is the next pole so we are located four poles the first pole is s equal to 0 the second pole is minus 1 plus j1 third pole is minus 1 minus j1 fourth pole is minus 4 so i will take s equal to minus 4 is the other pole these are the poles just remove this so to avoid the confusion confusion these are the poles okay, clear and we have four asymptotes and we don't know where is asymptotes will be stars so that's why we will find out the centroid here so centroid i will find out the centroid the centroid is represented with sigma the formula is the real part of poles real part of poles angle summation of and real part of zero angles by number of poles minus zeros already you know this formula here real part of poles is one is z zero is the first pole and minus one again minus one and the minus four these are the real parts of poles we doesn't have any zeros and we have poles minus zero is nothing but four then by doing this we will get minus one minus two we will get the minus six by four by solving this we will get minus 1.5 so minus 1.5 sigma centroid equal to minus 1.5 here just locate minus 1.5 maybe the centroid is at minus 1.5 means i will take here this is the centroid so i will take this is the centroid sigma and the sigma centroid have asymptotic angles so we will take a different color for the asymptotes so yellow color so this is the centroid we will take one so first asymp first angle equal 45 degrees maybe 45 means this is the 45 degrees so this color is not looking good just change the color go for the another color so i will go for the another color is uh, uh, light blue a different color yeah here we have minus 1.5 this is the centroid so just you take just you take minus 45 this is minus 315 and next and this is the another thing and this is the 135 okay this is the 135 so we will modify this like this so we should take yes now it is okay so these are the asymptotes these are the this will give the asymptotes okay this will give the asymptotes right so you know that this angle is 45 this angle is the 45 and this angle is the one 135 okay this angle is the 225 and this angle is the 315 so that's why I will take these are the asymptotes okay yes these are the asymptotic angle this is the centroid this is minus 1.5 minus 1.5 now we have four poles we need to take where it happens we need to take where it happens we should do that so generally first in this session we will go for the two poles available this pole and this pole in between these two poles we will have some we will have some root locus diagram so that's why we will make it so that's why we will make it like that how we will get the breaking point so now we will go for the 
so in real part in real axis in real axis we have s equal 0 is one pole and s equal minus 4 is two poles available so in between in between we have rl and break away point break away point first we should find out that break away point so what is the procedure to find the break away point first we should form the characteristic equation ce that equal 1 plus k by s into s square plus 2s plus 2 into s plus 4 so from this we will find the k in terms of f so we should find out s square plus 4s into s square plus 2s plus 2 plus k is equals to 0 so from this way I will form a k function that is it will become this side s square plus 4s and s square plus 2s plus 2 so by solving this we will get k value is finally minus of uh, finally I will write here that is that is k value is minus s power 4 plus 6s cube plus 10s square plus 8s plus it is so just to do the differentiation with respect to s and equate to 0 by doing this we will get d by ds so d by dk by ds will get by doing the simplification directly we have the equation that is 4s cube plus 18s square plus 20s plus yi is equals to 0 we will get this from this we have from this we have three poles the first of all by solving this we have the three poles the first of all minus 0 0.70 j.38 is the first pole and the second pole equal minus 0 0.70 plus j.38 and we have the third pole s3 equal minus 3.09 minus 10 power minus minus 6 j so if you observe here this is not this is not generally j.38 j.38 some are big values imaginary but this imaginary is very low value so we can eliminate this so we can eliminate this value so directly i can write the s3 is minus 3.09 so this is the i will we will consider the break away point break away point so we should take this is the break away point break away point minus 3.0 something means so i will consider this is the break away point so i will consider this is the break away point yes so from this we will write we will take breakaway point between these two points these two points so because this is minus 3.09 so that means so the the root locus diagram from these two points the root locus will be taken like this this poles and from this s0 we have the root locus so the root locus diagram is entering like this and it will it will out it will out like this so maybe not out so it will follow we have asymptotes will not out so look at here it will follow the asymptote it will follow the asymptote same it will follow the asymptote okay yeah it will follow the asymptote that means like this so that's why for these two points the diagram is 
like this so diagram is like this the root locus diagram a root locus is flowing in this way root locus is flowing in this way yeah so for this pole this may be the infinity pole that means if k equal to 0 again it will reach the infinite and here also for k equal to 0 again s minus 4 is k equal to 0 again it will reach the infinite and the gain will be the infinite okay this is for the poles on the real axis okay i hope all of you understand this session and this is very clear to you this is very clear to you in the next session we will discuss about the 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 root locus regarding to the complex conjugate poles okay i hope all of you understand this session thank you